As you might have guessed, in this lesson we're going to be talking about a property of matter called density. Specifically, we're going to look at what kind of property density is. Uh, we're talking about how density can be calculated and how the density of a substance can change. To get us started, let me ask you a question. Which is heavier, 100 pounds of feathers or 100 pounds of rocks? Many people would immediately jump to rocks as their answer, but they would be incorrect. This is actually a trick question. 100 pounds is exactly the same weight as 100 pounds, doesn't matter what you have. If I had instead told you which would weigh more, a handful of feathers or a handful of rocks, everyone would get that question right without thinking twice. But what's the difference between asking that question and asking this question? Well, when I say you have a handful of feathers and a handful of rocks, what I'm really cluing you in on is the volume of feathers and the volume of rocks. And intrinsically, you know, you understand that a rock is heavier than a feather. So a handful of rocks should be heavier than a handful of feathers. What you're doing there when you're making that assumption is you're relating mass to volume. And we actually have a way of representing the relationship between mass and volume, and that's called density. Density is the ratio between an object's mass and its volume. Mathematically, density equals mass divided by volume. You'll typically see this represented as an equation, d equals m over v. So what kind of property is density? Well, because density is calculated, it's really related to mass and volume quite heavily. And because I can figure out an object's mass and volume without altering the substance's identity, density is also a physical property, just like mass and volume. However, if you increase the mass of an object, let's say I add more rocks into my sample, I increase the mass, I'm also going to be increasing the volume proportionally. And that ends up having no effect on the density of those rocks. So density is not an extensive property, even though it's based on two extensive properties. It is, in fact, an intensive property. This is actually a really good thing for us, because if we can calculate the density of an unknown substance, we can use density as a property to identify what that substance is. So let's look at how we can calculate density. The first thing is that the units of density are typically going to be in grams per milliliter or grams per centimeter squared. These are equivalent units because a milliliter is exactly the same thing as a cubic centimeter or centimeter cubed. So grams per milliliter or grams per centimeter cubed are going to be the two most common ways we're going to represent density. They're not the only ways that are possible, but for our purposes they're going to be the most common. Basically what this tells us is that we're going to be looking for a mass that's measured in grams and a volume that's measured in either milliliters or cubic centimeters. This sort of gives us an idea of what to look for so that we can calculate the density of an object. I'm going to demonstrate now how to calculate the density of an unknown object by using an electronic balance to get the mass and by using a technique called water displacement to figure out the volume. You're going to use a very similar technique in lab. First let's take a look at the object. Here it is. Here's my unknown object. It's, uh, it's actually not unknown. It's a rubber stopper. Um, but we're going to calculate the density of it anyway. The first thing I'm going to do is weigh this. So I put it on a balance and it tells me that this stopper is 4.0 grams. So that part was easy. Now let's take a look at what the volume of this rubber stopper is. Here's a graduated cylinder that I filled with water. Now it doesn't actually matter how much water I put into this graduated cylinder as long as I record what the starting level of the water is. So let's get the starting level here. It's definitely between 20 and 25 and it's definitely above the first two little tick marks and below the next one. I'm reading the bottom of the meniscus here. The meniscus is this little sort of curved part of the water. So I'm reading the very bottom of that and it looks like it's about 22.5. Now I'm going to drop the object into the graduated cylinder and see how much the water changes. Here we go, I've dropped in my object. You can clearly see the water levels come up and it looks like it's about 25 milliliters. So if my initial volume is 22.5 milliliters and my final volume is 25 milliliters, all I have to do to figure out what the object is is take the difference between the two numbers. So by examining the difference between where the water level started at and where it ended up with after I added the rubber stopper, I can figure out that the final volume of the rubber stopper is 2.5 milliliters. 
and I'm going to use that information to now calculate the density. Okay, so I want to start by writing out my equation, d equals m over v. I'm going to plug in 4.0 grams, which is what the balance told me my mass was. I'm going to put in 2.5 milliliters for the volume that I figured out from water displacement. So I've now determined that the density of the rubber stopper is 1.6 grams per milliliter. Now there's one more interesting thing we can ask ourselves about density, and that is, can the density of a substance change? Now, we just said earlier that density is an intensive property, and it only depends on what the identity of the substance is. Now that's true to a degree. However, density is a result of a calculation, calculating mass divided by volume. So if there is some kind of factor that can affect either mass or volume that could alter the density of a substance without changing the substance itself. So what could possibly do that? Well, the answer to that question is temperature. And very quickly, we're going to talk about the effect of temperature on density. Now, you may know that when objects get warmer, they expand. If they're expanding, that means their volume is actually increasing. And any time the volume increases, the density is affected because density is partially derived from volume. So what is the actual effect here? Well, if volume goes up, that means I'm making the bottom of the fraction bigger, which means the density is actually getting smaller. So if temperature increases, if temperature goes up, the result is that my density goes down. And the degree to which temperature affects a substance actually depends a lot on what state it's in. Temperature has a much greater effect on the volume of gases than it does on the volume of solids. Solids can only expand so much, so they're the least affected by this phenomenon. But a liquid, and a gas particularly, will definitely be affected by an increase in temperature, and you'll see that the density can actually change. That concludes our lesson on density. Any questions you have about density, make sure you write them down in your notes and bring them with you to class.